Five, four, three, two, one. Five, four, three, two, one. Five, four, three, two, one. Mark. Your photo sequence has been initiated. Now into the final phase of this morning's launch countdown with the initiation of the ground launch sequencer. Standing by now for a request from the orbiter test conductor to Houston flight, then stored program commands which are the final update on the antenna alignment. Next significant event coming very shortly here with the orbiter crew axis arm being retracted away from the vehicle into the launch configuration. This arm can be re-extended in less than half a minute if that's necessary. T minus seven minutes, 30 seconds and counting. Yeah, let's go for orbiter access arm retract. In about 45 seconds, the orbiter test conductor will give pilot Charlie Bolden a go to perform the auxiliary power unit pre-start. Bolden will configure switches in the cockpit to put the APUs in the ready-to-start configuration. The APUs will be started at T minus five minutes. Go for APU pre-start will yeah, come yeah, in about yeah, 10 yeah. seconds. Yeah, yeah. You want to start your APU on your tip chart recorders, please. Recorder start. And PLT OTC. Play it. You can perform your APU pre-start, please. That, that's in work. The APUs provide hydraulic power to the orbiter. Standing by for confirmation that the APU pre-start is complete. Pre-start is complete. Three great talkbacks. Thank you, Charlie. Pilot Bolden reporting back that the pre-start operations are complete. T minus five minutes, 30 seconds. Mission Control has transmitted the signal to start the flight recorders. The two recorders will collect measurements of the shuttle system's performance during the flight for playback later after the vehicle is in orbit. May upon T minus five minutes and counting. Let's go for orbiter APU start. And we have a go for APU start. APU, please. That's in work, Stanley. And CDR with DC. Go ahead. You can reconfigure heaters, please. Commander Schreiber asked to reconfigure the orbiter heaters. He'll report uh, when that's complete. Ground launch sequencer has terminated liquid oxygen replenished to the external tank and is now initiating the LOX drain back. And OTC, PLT, APU, APU start is complete and yeah, so far so good. There are the good words. Three APUs in good health.
about to start a profile test. A profile test of the orbiter's aero surfaces. The orbiter flight control surfaces are being moved through a pre grove programmed pattern. And we'll have a gimbling of the main engine, which will follow. Final purge sequence of the main engines is in work. We're now transferring to internal power and switching off the orbiter's ground power supply. At this point, Discovery is being powered by the onboard fuel cells. T minus three minutes and counting. Go for pressurizing the external tank. All systems are DLT go for launch. Okay, clear caution and warning memory and verify no unexpected errors. Okay, we have no uh, caution and warning enunciation stand. Okay. That's complete. Thanks, Charlie. Standing by now, here is the retraction of the gaseous oxygen vent hood. Gimbling of the main engines is complete and the aerosurfaces have been verified that they are positioned for launch. The external tank now is reported to be at flight pressure. OTC 212, close and lock your visors and initiate your O2 flow and you all have a good trip. Roger that, Denmark. Let's go for ET LH2 pressurization. Bringing the LH2 pressurization up to flight level. 90 seconds away from launch now. One minute, 30 seconds. And the LH2 tank now reported at flight pressure. Both tanks, liquid and oxygen now, ready to flow propellants. One minute. Sound suppression water system is now being armed, which will flow water onto the mobile launcher platform at the rate of 900,000 gallons a minute, beginning at T minus 16 seconds. The, heater, the uh, heaters on the booster joints are now being turned off. The orbiter computers have positioned the vent doors to the launch configuration. Standing by now for a go for auto sequence start. T minus 33. Tap on clock will hold at T minus 31 seconds due to failure. We've had a hold. We do not know at this time what the problem is. We'll be standing by for a word, but the clock is holding at T minus 31 seconds due to a system failure. And NTDSD, it's the LO2 outboard cylinder drain valve. NTDSC MPL. Go ahead. It's uh, LCC MPS8. And uh, PV9 outboard cylinder drain closed power is off. It should be on. A recommendation? And uh, NTD, we're in a no-go situation. We should have uh, our open power, and we do not. Or excuse me, our, our closed power. SP. And uh, NTS, can we verify that the valve is closed? Negative. We are uh, right now show a open position. We cannot verify the valve is closed. SP, this is NTS. Go ahead, yeah. Yeah, we're looking at LCC reads now. If we have the closed power on and the open position off, we can cycle, uh, cycle one time and try to pick up the closed position, but uh, we have to pick up the closed power. Okay, and MPS, uh, we have a message that we were blocked by a prerequisite sequence, GCL 18. 
has happened is the ground launch sequencer would not hand off to the orbiter's computers to complete the count because the liquid oxygen fill and drain valve was showing off when it should be on. An analysis of the problem has begun. Uh, we've been holding two minutes. SD, this is uh, GMPS. We're going to make an attempt to cursor that valve closed. So we've got the pre set off. If this works, we should be in good shape. I copy. Proceed. It works. We have seven minutes of runtime available on the auxiliary power units. We've been holding now about two minutes and 20 seconds. There's the confirmation that we have successfully okay, and, uh, you're in the recycled. We are go for start. The hydraulic power units have started. Now the pressure water system has started. T minus 13 seconds. T minus 10, go for main engine start. We are go for main engine start. T minus 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and lift off of the space shuttle discovery with the Hubble Space Telescope. Standing by for SRB separation. And both solid rocket boosters have separated. Discovery's velocity now 4,300 feet per second at a downrange distance of 35 nautical miles. Booster officer reports all three engines stable at 104% performance. Discover Houston, performance is nominal. And Discovery, two-engine Ben Gurir. The two-engine Ben Gurir call means that uh, Discovery could reach the transatlantic abort site at Ben Gurir on two engines if it were necessary. Copy nominal performance, two-engine Ben. Velocity now 5,000 feet per second. Discovery 60 nautical miles away from the launch site.
All systems continuing to perform well aboard Discovery. Velocity now is 6,200 feet per second. Downrange 100 nautical miles. The uh, environmental systems officer reports the FES is operating well. That is the flash evaporator system that provides cooling to Discovery systems.